Hey guys, Hi. you cleaned up okay. Everybody, uh, welcome to crepe class. Crepes are traditionally French pancakes. The real characteristic of French crepes is that they bend extremely flexible. You can roll them around things, you can fold them into little trifolds, whether you're doing a traditional dish like crepe Suzette or a savory crepe, which is what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and start with two eggs, three quarters of a cup of milk, four ounces of water. Well, I went a little over, ah, doesn't matter. I have here one and a half ounces of melted butter that I've allowed to cool a little. I would add a pinch of salt to this, even if they were gonna be sweet. I just wanna barely bring it together. And now I'm going to add four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. Gluten is a protein matrix that is created when the proteins in wheat flour get wet and are agitated. You need a dough to make it strong. I don't want this strong. I want it weak. I want it flexible. So it's going to actually help me if I go ahead and mix everything ahead of time, because that way I'll be able to get the flour mixed in in just a few seconds. Really be slow uh, with your, your blender. I'm barely bringing the button up. This needs to sit and rest as long as you can spare. So if you're gonna keep it overnight, obviously you refrigerate it. If it's only gonna be about an hour, I would just park it someplace out of the way. I'm going to do a mushroom filling. The onion is going to form the base of our filling. There are 50 different ways that I know of to cut an onion. I lay it down so that the top part of the onion is towards me. Notice that I'm, I'm moving my knife in almost a fan manner, and that gives me something that looks like that. Much of French cuisine, you don't want color. You want to sweat the food, which means adding some salt to dry out liquid and heat that is low enough for the onion or whatever it is to become soft and translucent without browning. I have here eight ounces each of brown cremini mushrooms and shiitake mushrooms. Since they are full of water, we are definitely gonna use higher heat on the mushrooms. As I stir these around, it's gonna sound like little screams coming out of the mushrooms. Listen. That, that tells you the heat's high. You want them to start taking on brown color. Did you see that stuff on the bottom? I want that, because I'm about to deglaze this by adding a liquid that's gonna allow me to dissolve that flavor. Just enough to deglaze, kind of scraping around, because I wanna kind of loosen all that goodness that's on the bottom. I'm also gonna reduce the heat. My fat, my starches, and the milk are, uh, are building up, and if I go much further than that, I'm going to burn it. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of tarragon, and I'm gonna throw in a little bit of chive. I am gonna finish this with a couple of ounces of a melting cheese. I like provolone. I find that it's got a nice uh, flavor that doesn't get in the way of the mushrooms. You'll start to see it stringing up a little bit. And that's the filling. I'm gonna cover it, set it aside, it's done. Now it comes time to make crepes. Now we've got a couple of different styles of pans in this kitchen. I prefer this because I like a super clean edge on my crepes. I put it over medium low heat. My two dogs are sitting right here because they know I'm gonna screw up probably the first three crepes and throw them on the floor. They eat more crepes than I do. I have very cold butter, and I use it cold to control the pan temperature a little bit. If I swab this thing down with super cold butter, as the water in the butter boils away, it cools the pan. You wanna to try to get your batter evenly distributed on the pan. Now there's nothing I can do. I'm gonna wait. I'm just going to wait. I generally leave mine down for about 30 seconds. You'll look at the top and you'll notice it's not so shiny anymore. Now, if you're really good, well, I would have gotten that completely right. You can flip it like that, knock yourself out. And then I generally count to about 10. Hands up, hands tilted, pouring in the middle, letting the pan rotate to make even distribution. Get a little bit more color, got a little bit more delineation. I'm getting in a groove now. I'm gonna try to be a little neater with this one. My pan was starting to get too hot again. See how that, that's uh, rippled up there, almost like scrambled eggs? Yeah, I'm not the best in the world at this, but you don't have to be. My suggestion is eat your first one. The thing that you'll find that probably has to be changed is seasoning. If you know that it's gonna become a dessert crepe, it should still have a little bit of saltiness to it. If it's a savory crepe, you're gonna want it to taste good by itself. Little bit of butter. Crepe. Mushrooms. I don't want to make it very thick. I want to spread it out a little bit. Parmigiano Reggiano. When you're moving a crepe, try to do it 
without putting your fingers up through it. It's like pizza dough that way. It'll break very, very easily. Be very gentle. It's always a good idea when you're doing a dish like this. Keep some fresh herbs just cut right on your station. These might be, dad gum, I wish I had some parsley. Boom, and you've got it. I get mine just a little pressed because I don't want it to fill up with air. When I do the last one, I usually just do it like as a dollop in the middle. And then, a lot. It can go everywhere. Make it rain, make it rain, make it snow. I have a rack position in the center of the oven. I'm gonna stay here until it's lightly browned on top. Mm, I like that mushroom. It's so fluffy. So, crepes from scratch, and the filling, and the build. I know it sounds simple, but it's not. 